cook with me. If you're like me, then you're probably also struggling with getting your kids to eat something healthy. So being a mom of four, I'm always looking to make dishes which are healthy yet flavorful. One of my absolute go-to dishes is Palak Paneer. This is a popular classic Indian paneer dish which is made in a thick paste of spinach. As always, my channel is all about easy to follow and easy to implement. So the ingredients displayed on the right throughout the course and highlighted for each step. If you like my channel, please do subscribe, share and like. So come follow along and cook with me. These are all the ingredients that we need to make palak paneer. Paneer, 400 grams. You may choose to shallow fry the paneer for a couple of minutes or add the paneer directly to the gravy. If you choose to add the paneer directly to the gravy, then soak the paneer in warm water for about 5 minutes. You do not want to soak the paneer for longer than 5 minutes or you don't want the water temperature to be too hot, then the paneer will crumble in the gravy. Here I have baby spinach, 16 ounces or 1 pound bag. It is recommended to use young spinach for this recipe. If you're using baby spinach, which I am, then you can use the stems. However, if you're using regular spinach, then make sure you cut out the large stems because that makes the gravy a little bitter. Here I have one large onion, about 210 grams, chopped into pieces, one inch of ginger, again cut into pieces, five to six cloves of garlic, and about 15 to 20 cashews. To make the palak puree, I will be frying the spinach with the onions, ginger, garlic, and cashews and make the puree. Here I have all the spices that I will be needing to make the palak paneer. Half a teaspoon cumin seeds, five green cardamoms, two one inch cinnamon stick, four cloves, one teaspoon kasuri methi and two to three green chilies. Green chilies completely optional based on your spice level. One medium to large tomato, about 160 grams. Five tablespoons of oil, coriander leaves for garnishing and some salt to taste. First, we will fry the onions with the ginger garlic. For that, we need two tablespoons of oil onion, garlic, and ginger. I'm adding two tablespoons of oil and make sure the oil is hot before adding the onions. The oil is now hot so I will add the onions and fry the onions till they become a little light brown in color. The onions have turned a little bit light brown. Now I will add the ginger garlic. So adding the garlic cloves and the ginger. I will fry the ginger garlic with the onion for another two to three minutes and then add the spinach and the cashews. Next I will add the spinach and the cashews. Now I have fried the ginger garlic with the onions for about three minutes. Now I will add the spinach and cook the spinach till it wilts completely. Uh, do not cook for more than uh, two to three minutes because then the gravy will turn bitter. So cook uh, the spinach and add the cashews. I have cooked the spinach and the cashews with the onion and the ginger garlic for three minutes. As you can see, the spinach has now wilted completely. Next, we are going to transfer this to a blender and make that into a smooth puree. Make sure that the, the stock or the water that has come out from the spinach, you add that as well um, as you're making the puree um, because this, this water will help enhance the flavor too. I have transferred the spinach onion mixture in a blender adding the stock or the water that also came out from uh, the spinach. To this I will add about a quarter cup of water and now blend this into a smooth puree. 
I have blend the spinach onion mixture in a smooth puree. Make sure the puree is smooth. Uh, the cashews help uh, give a creamy texture to it. So now we will cook the tomatoes with our spices. Next, I'm going to cook the tomatoes with the masala. For that, I will be making the tomatoes into a smooth paste. So transfer the tomatoes in a blender and make this into a paste. For the whole spices, we will need the cumin seeds, green cardamom, cinnamon stick, cloves, kasuri methi, green chilies, and three tablespoons of oil. To make the tomatoes into a smooth paste, transfer the tomatoes in a blender. And there's no need to add any water because the tomatoes will give out water and make this into a smooth paste. Now I will add the oil make sure the oil is hot before adding the whole spices the oil is now hot so I will first add the green chilies the cumin seeds the green cardamom cinnamon stick and the cloves we will be adding the kasuri methi later and stir the whole spices till the cumin seeds start spluttering and we get a nice aroma from the other whole spices. The cumin seeds have started spluttering and we are getting a nice aroma from the spices. So now I will add the tomato paste. So I have blend the tomatoes and made this into a smooth paste. So I will add that. and mix this, the tomato paste, with the spices. I will also add some salt as per taste and also the kasuri methi and then mix the tomato paste with the rest of the masala and continue cooking till the gravy really thickens and the oil is separating out. It will typically take between four to five minutes for the masala to get cooked. Now we will add the palak paste that I had made before with the spinach and the onion mixture. So adding that, and we will cook this with the tomatoes and the spices till we can see the bubbles coming out. We are not going to cook this for long because um, otherwise the gravy can turn a little bit bitter. So maybe for about uh, four to five minutes till you can see the bubbles coming out from the palak puree. Now, as you can see, there are bubbles which are coming out from the puree. So it has taken me exactly six minutes. Um, however, it will depend on the oven and the flame that you're using. So make sure that um, the you can see the bubbles before you add the paneer. So adding the paneer to the puree. And I'll mix the paneer really well and cook this for not more than two to three minutes. Excess cooking will make the paneer very hard and rubbery, so you want to make sure you don't overcook it. I have cooked the paneer for about three minutes, so now our palak paneer is ready to serve. Thank you very much for watching my recipe. Let me know how this dish turns out for you and hope you really enjoy it. Thank you.